Against Heresies by St. Irenaeus In this narrated video, St. Irenaeus explains how church doctrine is dangerously corrupted by heretics, and he also describes the global unity of the true faith. The text of this sermon is in the public domain. All of the pictures used in this video are also in the public domain. The following Virgo Potens production is a narrated video of excerpts from Against Heresies by St. Irenaeus, narrated by Tony Capo Bianco. Irenaeus of Lyons, Against Heresies, Book 1, Preface. Inasmuch as certain men have set the truth aside, and bring in lying words and vain genealogies, which, as the Apostle says, minister questions rather than godly edifying which is in faith, and by means of their craftily constructed plausibilities draw away the minds of the inexperienced and take them captive, I have felt constrained, my dear friend, to compose the following treaties in order to expose and counteract their machinations. These men falsify the oracles of God and prove themselves evil interpreters of the good word of revelation. They also overthrow the faith of many by drawing them away under a pretense of superior knowledge from him whom rounded and adorned the universe. As if, forsooth, they had something more excellent and sublime to reveal than that God who created the heaven and the earth and all things that are therein. By means of specious and plausible words, they cunningly allure the simple-minded to inquire into their system. But they nevertheless clumsily destroy them, while they initiate them into their blasphemous and impious opinions respecting the demiurge and these simple ones are unable, even in such a matter, to distinguish falsehood from truth. Error, indeed, is never set forth in its naked deformity, lest, being thus exposed, it should at once be detected. But it is craftily decked out in an attractive dress, so as, by its outward form, to make it appear to the inexperienced ridiculous as the expression may seem, more true than the truth itself. One far superior to me has well said, in reference to this point, a clever imitation in glass casts contempt, as it were, on the precious jewel the emerald, which is most highly esteemed by some, unless it come under the eye of one able to test and expose the counterfeit. Or again, what inexperienced person can with ease detect the presence of brass when it has been mixed up with silver? Lest, therefore, through my neglect some should be carried off even as sheep are by wolves, while they perceive not the true character of these men, because they outwardly are covered with sheep's clothing, against whom the Lord has enjoined us to be on our guard, and because their language resembles ours, while their sentiments are very different. I have deemed it my duty, after reading some of the commentaries, as they call them, of the disciples of Valentinus, and after making myself acquainted with their tenets through personal intercourse with some of them, to unfold to thee, my friend, these portentous and profound mysteries, which do not fall within the range of every intellect, because all have not sufficiently purged their brains." I do this in order that thou, obtaining an acquaintance with these things, mayest in turn explain them to all those with whom thou art connected, and exhort them to avoid such an abyss of madness and of blasphemy against Christ. I intend, then, to the best of my ability, with brevity and clearness, to set forth the opinions of those who are now promulgating heresy. I refer especially to the disciples of Ptolemaeus, whose school may be described as a bud from that of Valentinus. I shall also endeavor, according to my moderate ability, to furnish the means of overthrowing them, by showing how absurd and inconsistent with the truth are their statements. Not that I am practiced either in composition or eloquence, but my feeling of affection prompts me to make known to thee and all thy companions those doctrines which have been kept in concealment until now, 
but which are at last, through the goodness of God, brought to light. For there is nothing hidden which shall not be revealed, nor secret that shall not be made known. Thou wilt not expect from me, who am resident among the Celtae, and am accustomed, for the most part, to use a barbarous dialect, any display of rhetoric, which I have never learned, or any excellence of composition, which I have never practiced, or any beauty and persuasiveness of style, to which I make no pretensions. But thou wilt accept in a kindly spirit what I, in a like spirit, write to thee simply, truthfully, and in my own homely way, whilst thou thyself, as being more capable than I am, wilt expand those ideas of which I send thee, as it were, only the seminal principles. And in the comprehensiveness of thy understanding, wilt develop to their full extent the points on which I briefly touch, so as to set with power before thy companions those things which I have uttered in weakness. In fine, as I, to gratify thy long-cherished desire for information regarding the tenets of these persons, have spared no pains, not only to make these doctrines known to thee, but also to furnish the means of showing their falsity. So shalt thou, according to the grace given to thee by the Lord, prove an earnest and efficient minister to others, that men may no longer be drawn away by the plausible system of these heretics, which I now proceed to describe. Chapter 10 Unity of the Faith of the Church Throughout the Whole World The Church, though dispersed throughout the whole world, even to the ends of the earth, has received from the apostles and their disciples this faith. She believes in one God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and the sea, and all things that are in them, and in one Christ Jesus, the Son of God, who became incarnate for our salvation, and in the Holy Spirit, who proclaimed through the prophets the dispensations of God, and the advents, and the birth from a virgin, and the passion, and the resurrection from the dead, and the ascension into heaven in the flesh of the beloved Christ Jesus, our Lord, and his future manifestation from heaven in the glory of the Father, to gather all things in one, and to raise up anew all flesh of the whole human race, in order that to Christ Jesus, our Lord, and God, and Savior, and King, according to the will of the invisible Father, every knee should bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess to him, that he should execute just judgment towards all, that he may send spiritual wickednesses, and the angels who transgressed and became apostates, together with the ungodly and unrighteous and wicked and profane among men, into everlasting fire. But may, in the exercise of his grace, confer immortality on the righteous and holy, and those who have kept his commandments, and have persevered in his love, some from the beginning of their Christian course, and others from the date of their repentance, and may surround them with everlasting glory. As I have already observed, the Church, having received this preaching and this faith, although scattered throughout the whole world, yet as if occupying but one house, carefully preserves it, she also believes these points of doctrine, just as if she had but one soul, and one and the same heart, and she proclaims them, and teaches them, and hands them down, with perfect harmony, as if she possessed only one mouth. For, although the languages of the world are dissimilar, yet the import of the tradition is one and the same. For the churches which have been planted in Germany do not believe or hand down anything different, nor do those in Spain, nor those in Gaul, nor those in the East, nor those in Egypt, nor those in Libya, 
nor those which have been established in the central regions of the world. But as the Son, that creature of God, is one and the same throughout the whole world, so also the preaching of the truth shineth everywhere and enlightens all men that are willing to come to a knowledge of the truth. Nor will any one of the rulers in the churches, however highly gifted he may be in point of eloquence, teach doctrines different from these, for no one is greater than the master. Nor, on the other hand, will he who is deficient in power of expression inflict injury on the tradition. For, the faith being ever one and the same, neither does one who is able at great length to discourse regarding it make any addition to it, nor does one who can say but little diminish it. It does not follow because men are endowed with greater and less degrees of intelligence that they should therefore change the subject matter of the faith itself and should conceive of some other God besides him who is the framer, maker, and preserver of this universe as if he were not sufficient for them or of another Christ or another only begotten. But the fact referred to simply implies this that one may, more accurately than another, bring out the meaning of those things which have been spoken in parables, and accommodate them to the general scheme of the faith, and explain, with special clearness, the operation and dispensation of God connected with human salvation, and show that God manifested long-suffering in regard to the apostasy of the angels who transgressed, as also with respect to the disobedience of men and set forth why it is that one and the same God has made some things temporal and some eternal, some heavenly and others earthly, and understand for what reason God, though invisible, manifested himself to the prophets not under one form, but differently to different individuals, and show why it was that more covenants than one were given to mankind and teach what was the special character of each of these covenants. And search out for what reason God hath concluded every man in unbelief that he may have mercy upon all, and gratefully describe on what account the word of God became flesh and suffered, and relate why the advent of the Son of God took place in these last times, that is, in the end, rather than in the beginning of the world, and unfold what is contained in the scriptures concerning the end itself, and things to come, and not be silent as to how it is that God has made the Gentiles, whose salvation was despaired of, fellow heirs, and of the same body, and partakers with the saints." and discourse how it is that this mortal body shall put on immortality, and this corruptible shall put on incorruption, and proclaim in what sense God says, that is a people who was not a people, and she is beloved who was not beloved, and in what sense he says that more are the children of her that was desolate than of her who possessed a husband. For in reference to these points and others of a like nature, the apostle exclaims, O oh, the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out! But the superior skill spoken of is not found in this, that any one should, beyond the creator and framer of the world, conceive of the enthymesis of an erring eon, their mother and his, and should thus proceed to such a pitch of blasphemy. Nor does it consist in this, that he should again falsely imagine, as being above this fancied being, a pleroma at one time supposed to contain thirty, and at another time an innumerable tribe of eons, as these teachers who are destitute of truly divine wisdom maintain, which the Catholic Church possesses one and the same faith throughout the whole world, as we have already said. Chapter 22 Deviations of Heretics from the Truth The rule of truth which we hold is that there is one God Almighty, 
who made all things by his word, and fashioned, and formed, out of that which had no existence, all things which exist. Thus saith the scripture, to that effect, By the word of the Lord were the heavens established, and all the might of them, by the spirit of his mouth. And again, all things were made by him, and without him was nothing made. There is no exception or deduction stated, but the Father made all things by him, whether visible or invisible, objects of sense or of intelligence, temporal, on account of a certain character given them, or eternal. And these eternal things he did not make by angels, or by any powers separated from his anoia. For God needs none of all these things, but is he who, by his word and spirit, makes and disposes and governs all things, and commands all things into existence, He who formed the world, for the world is of all. He who fashioned man, he who is the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, above whom there is no other God, nor initial principle, nor power, nor pleroma. He is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, as we shall prove. Holding, therefore, this rule, we shall easily show, notwithstanding the great variety and multitude of their opinions, that these men have deviated from the truth, for almost all the different sects of heretics admit that there is one God. But then, by their pernicious doctrines, they change this truth into error, even as the Gentiles do through idolatry, thus proving themselves ungrateful to him that created them. Moreover, they despise the workmanship of God, speaking against their own salvation, becoming their own bitterest accusers, and being false witnesses against themselves. Yet, reluctant as they may be, these men shall one day rise again in the flesh, to confess the power of him who raises them from the dead. But they shall not be numbered among the righteous on account of their unbelief. Since, therefore, it is a complex and multiform task to detect and convict all the heretics, and since our design is to reply to them all according to their special characters, we have judged it necessary, first of all, to give an account of their source and root, in order that, by getting a knowledge of their most exalted bythus, thou mayest understand the nature of the tree which has produced such fruits. End of Excerpts from Against Heresies by St. Irenaeus Narrated by Tony Capobianco Welcome to the Virgo Potens YouTube channel. If you enjoy this video, give it a like. I also invite you to subscribe to this channel so that you won't miss new content. Please prayerfully consider supporting my work by becoming a patron of Virgo Potens on Patreon and or by buying one of my books. My ebooks are available on Amazon as well as on the Apple Bookstore. For those who prefer a physical copy rather than an ebook, my book, Spiritual Warfare, Know Thy Enemy, is also available as a paperback on Amazon. If you are interested in making a one-time contribution, I suggest that you do so by simply buying one of my books. I am thankful for your support. Links to Patreon and to my books will be posted in the comments section of this video. The continuation of this work isn't possible without you. Lastly, and most importantly, please pray for me. May the Virgin Most Powerful guide and protect you.